the State Department waived visa interview for some of non-immigrant applicants. Now, don't forget to follow this page because you don't want to miss any immigration news and update. Now, let's get back to it. Now, what does that mean? What do you think happened? Basically, good news for some of you who will be applying with the State Department, meaning through the embassy and the consulate for a non-immigrant visa. And the reason, actually, the State Department moved this way is due to the huge backlog of visa and the extended time for people to schedule and actually be able to secure an appointment with the U.S., you know, obviously consulate or embassy. Now, as you can imagine, it's always the devil is always in the detail. Now, let's see. This is exactly what has been implemented and starting January 1st, you know, 2024, as far as this particular rule with the U.S. State Department. The first time H2 applicant, if you are a first time H2 applicant, basically here we're talking about temporary agricultural and non-agricultural worker, you will not have to go through the embassy and have a, an interview and just because of the volume that's why that's the reason there is always a policy reason behind it also if you have been an, another non-immigrant applicant okay visa applicant and you were previously issued a non-immigrant visa this is very important in any classification at the exception of the b1 b2 you guys, B1, B2, this does not apply to you. This does not apply to the visitor visa. And number two, if you are applying within 48 months of your most recent non-immigrant visa expiration date, you don't have to actually appear at the embassy. Let me give you an example. Let's say you are a non-immigrant visa let's say that maybe you're coming here as a student you're an f1 and f1 is a non-immigrant visa okay you were issued actually a visa 48 months ago if you apply for another visa within the 48 month the expiration of the 48 month preceding obviously the first visa then you won't have to apply for another visa. It's basically saying that, okay, we've seen you guys before, you know, everything went well. We're assuming that within 48 months, which is basically, you know, an amount of time where they believe that everything should basically do the same. You seem to be a low risk type of applicant. Then we don't need to see you at the U.S. Embassy, meaning basically that's what it, it boils down to, right? Okay. But obviously, you have to meet, all applicants have to meet certain requirements because it's always, always based on certain requirements. And most of the most important will be obviously, you know, related to your good moral character. You know, obviously, everything has, you have to show that you're not a risk to the United States. But let's, you know, get into it. Now, you have to make sure that obviously at this point, this enter this will be applicable you know annually you know, meaning that the government can change you know obviously the rules you know we're having the election and obviously that could change you know between now and then if, if we have a new administration or even if the circumstance actually requires so then that will be the case and now in order for to to be eligible for this particular interview waiver you as an applicant you have to apply in your country of nationality of residence. Let's go back to the example of the student who is actually applying, you know, obviously for another visa and want to make sure that, okay, am I eligible for a waiver? You will have to apply in your country of residence or your country, country of nationality, meaning that it's different. You cannot just go and apply maybe to a neighboring country where you have no tie whatsoever. That's not gonna work, you know, obviously. And if you have no residence, or if you're not a national of that country, that will not work. That's what they mean here. And obviously you have never been, been refused a visa, except, again, always the detail, if that visa actually refusal was waived or overcame, meaning basically, 
even if your VA visa was actually refused in the past, but you were able to overcome that refusal, that's fine. You will still be eligible to have a waiver, okay, of the interview, obviously. And finally, you have no potential ineligibility. That's what when I was telling you about the good moral character, when they say no potential ineligibility, meaning because there are a lot of category, a lot of reason why you could be ineligible to receive a visa. For example, it could be based maybe on a criminal conviction. It could be based uh, probably also because some of you, and we, I think we discussed this in the past, meaning let's say, for example, you have an F1 visa. We're still going back to that example. You have an F1, you know, you have F1 student, you know, you're a student, you have F1 visa. And some found themselves actually having their visa canceled due to, you know, some infraction that have occurred in the U.S., right? Or even in the country of origin, meaning that be careful because that can have an effect. And that's why when they say ineligible, you have to show that you are not ineligible or potential ineligibility, meaning that if you have, for example, something like a scuffle on campus and maybe the police, you know, the, the administration is taking it to court or whatever, and it comes into the system, that could affect actually your visa and your status, okay? Uh, for example, also, what type of eligibility that could come could be also based on health because they are health also what is considered inadmissibility ground based on health, meaning those are actually other examples where you could find yourself not eligible for this interview waiver. What does that mean? If, that's, if you're not eligible for this particular waiver, you know, for you to appear, then you will have to appear to, obviously, to the embassy or the consulate. That way, the officer, you know, obviously, we just want to make sure that to clear any question or any issue that you may have. Meaning that all of this to say, this is great news, you know, for those of you who are non-immigrant applicant, and who are seeking entry to the United States. Again, remember, does not apply to the B1, B2 because that's gonna clear the backlog, okay? And uh, for you to be able to, uh, to move forward, then obviously, if now you find yourself, you know, obviously bar to have to, to benefit from this particular interview waiver, do not despair. It just means that now you're just gonna have to go to the embassy and the, and the consulate or the consulate and actually go through the interview. And if you can clear this, any issue, this issue that may come up, that may, this potential issue, then you should be good to go. But again, don't forget to click on the page, you know, follow the page. My name is Annie Coloco. I am an immigration lawyer. And thank you again for watching. Until next time, good luck. Thank you. Bye.